Let's talk about social good issues you're passionate about. Is it improving health care, equitable access to education, maybe the community you grew up in? How do we usually try to tackle these problems? We throw money at it, we devise laws and policy, but oftentimes it feels it's hard to make progress in changing the hearts and minds. But what if we retold these issues as stories that need to be told? For example, how hard is it for children without access to good uh, glasses how hard is learning going to be for them? So what if we could see their world through their eyes? So this is an immersive story created by UF student Takashi Wicks, who wanted to give us the experience of what does the world look like for 180 million children around the world without access to good glasses. This is available to anybody in the world on their smartphone to experience. And so your stories, when you see this, hope you think your stories could be experienced for anybody to improve the social good. Let me tell you a little bit about my story. So in 1992, I was home from high school for summer vacation in my home country of Malaysia. I walked into an arcade, and I saw people wearing this big bulky thing on their head. They had a joystick. They were swinging around. They were ducking and weaving. They were having a great time. And thanks to the great dollar to ring and exchange, I got to try out this game. So I put that thing on. What did I see? Some platforms are real simplistic by today's standards. A pterodactyl was flying above for some reason. And <laughs> my opponent. And I remember for the next few minutes, that virtual world was my world. And when I took off the head mount, I remember being sad that I was back in that arcade. But I didn't forget that that ability to trans uh, transform people, tr get them to see another place, was fantastic. And I knew it was for more than games. So for the last 20 years, I've been involved with creating virtual worlds. And for a big chunk of that time, VR, as my mentor used to say, is for a few rich people. So pilots that were trained to fly an airplane or architects evaluating building designs, only they could exp uh, afford the expensive setups. So now you used to ask audiences, how many people tried virtual reality? Almost no hands would go up. But four years ago, that changed when virtual reality became available to the general public. And now, anybody with a phone, if you have a phone in your pocket, you could try VR. So if, when I ask people now, like I do here, how many people have tried virtual reality? Can I show your hands? So a lot of hands go up. That's fantastic. How many people do I have tried virtual reality for something other than games or entertainment? So very few hands have come up. And has anybody here tried creating their own virtual reality experience? Very, very few. And so we get told that VR is an entertainment technology that we're supposed to consume. We don't have a role in it. And I want to change that today because we are not realizing the full potential. See, VR is all about storytelling, telling your stories in a compelling, immersive way to change people's minds and hearts, to build empathy in the user. So using VR, they can see another world, experience another place through somebody else's eyes, interact here, and hopefully change uh, their thoughts around a social good topic. OK? So you might think, I don't know anything about virtual reality. I don't know how to program. I might not be, into, I might not be a techie. But that doesn't matter. All, when the hardware and software prices came down, so did what's required to get started. Now everybody here can create their own virtual reality applications within a few weeks. So a couple years ago, I was talking to a good friend of mine, Dr. Sri Kalyanaraman, who's a journalism professor at the University of Florida. And we've been in VR for a long time, and we were surprised why, now that VR was available to the general public, were people not coming together and solving their tough problems using VR. You see, we've been talking with researchers, innovators, and entrepreneurs, and they said, we've got these tough problems. I think VR might be able to help, but I don't know. The problem was they couldn't get started because they didn't have the resources, they didn't have the training, they didn't have the team. So oftentimes, those barriers were so high, they just gave up. At the same time, we were hearing from folks who were gathering together and saying they want to learn about VR. So here's when students put out a call uh, for students who were interested in learning about virtual reality, here's who showed up. So there's a room, a packed room, the mostly guys. But they were freshmen through graduate students. They were digital art majors. They were English and journalism majors. They are computer scientists and engineers. And they were savvy. They knew that this technology was for more than games. And they actually set out to figure out how to do that themselves. They put together a curriculum that anybody can go through to build the first virtual reality application. They learned how to tell immersive stories. They just needed tough problems to work on. So Sri and I brought these groups together, people with important problems, and people who could tell immersive stories. We gave them equipment, 
advising and training, and then we got out of the way. We say, what can they do? What will they do? And they formed teams to tackle social good problems. So in the past year, hundreds of teams, hundreds of people have uh, come together. Dozens of projects have started. P these projects have been pitched to investors. They've been t tried by the general public, and new research directions have been started. And where are we going well with all of this? Thousands of VR projects created by our community because it's our community that's empowered. All of you who are working on tough social good problems, you now have a new tool in your tool belt to tell immersive stories to change the hearts and minds of others. So let's try something here. Let's close your eyes. Think of a story that needs to be told. Whose eyes are you seeing that through? Is it your eyes, perhaps when you were younger, a younger you, tough, facing a tough situation? Or maybe it's somebody you know with a very compelling story that other people need to experience. Whose shoes need to be walked in? OK, you can open your eyes. So hopefully you're intrigued. How can I move from being a consumer of virtual reality to a creator of virtual reality? Three easy steps. First, you can learn how to build your first virtual reality application. It only takes a phone and a computer and that story you just saw in your, in your mind a few seconds ago, you could be telling that, and it could be experienced by anybody in the world with a phone. Okay. Second, learn what stories need to be told. VR telling the right stories is a compelling medium. So here's an example of a student, an interior design student. She is going through her model of a store. And she's experienced it from, a, from her uh, a unique to her perspective, of somebody in a wheelchair. And as she navigates the store, she finds out, when she laid it out, that somebody in a wheelchair can't reach all the items that she put there. This was created by Dr. Jason Minnelli and four students who had just learned to create virtual reality applications. And they did this all within two months. You can see the right story can move the right people and change hearts and minds. The third thing to do is connect with others. There are online groups that will connect you with people that also share the same social good, challenge, uh, social good passions that you have. Together, you're going to create something special. See, people have been asking me that I've been in VR for, for several decades. They said, Ben, when am I going to use virtual reality for something other than games? When am I going to see that more in my daily lives? So that's only going to happen when people see themselves as playing a large role in creating virtual reality. So everybody in this audience, hopefully you've been motivated to say, what role do I have? to advance VR. How can I use this in, to improve the social good? So remember that story you saw when your eyes were closed? Tell your story virtually, moves hearts and minds, and make a real change. Thank you.